Hello everyone and welcome to this newest edition of In At Arms. This is Remnants from 40k Theories. And this is Fiora. How is everybody doing? And today we're going to be delving into the science of shark shit. You'll understand why in a minute. Um, for the purposes of looking at the war gear of the Tyranid High Fleets. So we're going to start things off by taking a look at the Bone Sword. Now, the bone sword itself is a living organism which has a small brain situated deep within its hilt and a rudimentary sentience that allows it to gradually grow in length and repair any battle damage to itself and maintain a deadly monomolecular edge. It is a slave to the will of the wielder and therefore incapable of any independent thought. However, it constantly crackles with powerful psychic energy that flows along embedded nerve tendrils to create a psychic field around the blade, basically a biological version of a force or power weapon. Uh, this energy amplifies in potency when in close, close proximity to another bone source, such as when used in pairs. The serrations on both edges are originally uh, the creature's massively elongated horn. We see bone swords today in the form of swordfish, marlin, and the helicoprin dinosaur shark. These, cr this, these creatures have various bones that are sharpened for the purposes of piercing, slashing, and tearing apart opponents. Now, the psychic energy that flows through it was the kicker, and I had to, but we did look into how power fields could be formed. As discussed earlier with the Space Marine video, it is formed through electrical current run in such a way that an electrical field so intense it heats up and cuts matter as it encounters the matter. This combined with a bioelectric field of, say, an electric eel, known as a knife fish, and then cranked up to, I don't know, 13, can create the necessary electrical charge to create a psychic power field. This means that not only could you create a bone sword using DNA found upon Earth, but you could also bioengineer the power field for it. The only problem being that unlike the bone sword the Tyranids wield that they can actually put down, um, this one is permanently attached to the wielder. Okay. Uh, next up then, we'll be taking a look at the Barbed Strangler. Now, these weapons fire seed pods that grow into maturity within seconds, spreading out hook tendrils in all directions. The seed itself begins um, with a pod the size of a man's fist and filed from a simple muscular tube. If the pod itself pierces armor, it activates and grows thanks to the warmth and moisture of the body it just impacted into. And within seconds, a number of tentacles shoot through the body and tear it apart. At full development, the tendrils lash out of the victim and spread in all directions. Um, even if something hit by it survives, they will still be bound by the steely hard tendrils and therefore helpless. And it, the initial burst of the growth is easy enough, pow easily powerful enough to destroy anything it impacts, including vehicle armor, if it can find a suitable chink within it. Okay, let's break this down. Just a few little bits of this weapon at a time to show how it is biologically possible. So, for a start, everyone, I hate to break it, but uh, no biological organism can, would grow this quickly. Without being able to consume or grow its own food, both of which take time. That's important to note that when they fire these things, they would actually have to already be fully grown. Just really, really condensed and curled up into a ball similar to a porcupine or hedgehog. But if we take an organism from the deep, deep ocean, the spiky blue urchin to be exact and give it the ability to simply shoot and discard the spines attached to it we can easily make this organism work that is to say you could fire something similar to a spiky blue urchin that puffs itself out and shoots all of its spines out of its body when it does so now um, we need to get this thing flying at bullet speed Getting it hard enough to pierce armor is a matter of bone density which and velocity. You need to get it up to at least 370 meters per second, and the bone strength is referred to as tabecular microstructure. That is to say, the number of microstructures, fissures, and other uh, actual holes in your bones determine how strong they really are. What we do know is if you crank it up to the density of steel, the same density as elephant tusks, you could fire it with the velocity to penetrate armor and therefore create a weapon that can damage people, bulletproof vests, and other lightly armored vehicles. 
This could mean the Tyranid didn't actually originally evolve this, but rather captured DNA similar to a sea urchin that can shoot its spines out and determined to make use of it as a weapon by evolving with the DNA upon consumption. This also explains why Tyranids are so adaptable and intelligent. They aren't simply evolving mindlessly, but rather with purpose, and as they acquire useful DNA that can be manipulated for their evolution from various planets, we get new breeds of Tyranid. They also acquire the intelligence of said creatures, in theory. There's a theory for you. Why are the Tyranids so smart? <laughs> Moving on now, we'll be taking a look at the Death Spitter. Now, this weapon is actually formed from three different creatures. Uh, inside the weapon is a warm brood chamber where the maggot-like creatures that form the ammunition are grown. Uh, they have a tough outer shell and filled with highly corrosive and volatile fluid. Next to the brood chamber is the aiming orifice, where, in residing within it, is a spider-jawed creature which strips the maggot's carapace off and drops it into the firing colon. The colon reacts to the corrosive flesh of the maggot and produces a powerful spasm to launch the creature out of the weapon. The maggot then impacts with a target, splattering over a wide area and killing with a combination of velocity, poison and corrosive slime, which can eat through flesh and armor with ease. Okay. So remember how I said we had to get this thing moving at 370 meters per second in the last one? I'm going to explain how we do it now, as well as some other less than, well, appetizing things. If you ate lunch recently, pause the video and come back in five minutes. Okay, I'm about to give you a whole new reason to hate flies, specifically horse flies. You see, horse flies implant their young into the carcass of dead animal to create magnets, like all flies. These magnets have a tough outer shell and highly acidic spit that they use to digest the meat outside of their mouths then drink it up like a soup. This is similar to what a spider does to a creature's insides when it bites and injects them with digestive agents. These creatures therefore are more than capable of being used in a fashion described by the maggots that shot at high velocity and like all bugs would splatter into their targets all over the place. Now, furthermore, the colon spasm. Well, I looked at several animals, and I had to look at things that ejected pieces from animals' bodies. So yes, <laughs> we had to look at elephant trunks, several animals' penises, and animal colons. The things we do for you, I hope you appreciate it. Well, in interesting news, the colon of a great white shark has the same muscle strength as its jaw, able to exert over two tons of force upon biting. This is to ensure that any excrement, which may still have some blood in it from its meal, is ejected as far from the creature as possible to prevent a feeding frenzy because blood was stuck to the creature. Furthermore, it can eject this despite thousands of kilograms of water pressure when the creature is at 500 meters below the surface of the earth, the deepest a great white shark has ever been known to go. This is roughly 744.7 pounds per square inch, by the way. Using the formula 744.7 pounds per square inch to a maggot with a barrel to escape through, these creatures are reaching an excess of 1.1 kilometers per second. That's 1,100 meters plus per second. Anything flying that fast, regardless of its composition, when it hits something is going to hurt. If it is acidic and inherently poisonous, these qualities would survive impact and splatter around in a radius of 0.27 meters squared. This means everyone within 0.27 meters who isn't protected or shielded in some way would likely be hit with poisonous and corrosive slime, aerosoled by the friction traveling through the air, and the force of impact with the heat generated from these two events would result in rapid cooling, meaning you would inhale acid and try to exhale liquid acid. That is assuming you didn't get hit with a direct smack by the death spitter to your body, which would, within 11 heartbeats, cause 40% of your bloodstream to be acidic. So in, a, in, a, in essence, really, um, not good <laughs> to be hit by one of these things. Not good at all. But yeah, um, unfortunately... 
Not, Sorry, carry on. Not, not only is this weapon possible, but all we need to engineer it is a shark's ass and a set of horsefly maggots. And things just keep getting worse, because next up we have the Devourer. Now, resembling a conical lump of rotting flesh, this weapon is infested by ammunition known as flesh worms. These are parasitic creatures with black shiny heads. When the weapon is triggered, a bioelectric jolt hurls a shower of these creatures at the enemy, where they immediately start burrowing into the flesh, eating their way through the victim's nervous system towards the brain. Devourers wielded by larger tyrant organisms are loaded with a different variant of the worms known as brain leech worms, which are a more aggressive breed. When these worms are launched at a target, in a swarm of over hundreds at a time, they either shatter against the target and spread acid and poison over it, or pierce the armor to burrow into the flesh as described. Um, so yeah, this is uh, a very nasty weapon because you die after going completely insane if you didn't die from the impact. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you why we fear if tapeworms and earthworms ever evolve a way to mate. Earthworms have dozens, if not hundreds, of vicious teeth row upon row of them in order to eat anything they find in the earth. These teeth are too small to penetrate human skin or any other animal skin, but are more than capable of devouring through the dirt. Just go look at them under a microscope. Earthworms' mouths are terrifying. Now, tapeworms, specifically Cystoceresis and Echonococcus, Cocosis, excuse me, evolve to create cysts for their larvae inside the human body, using our stomachs as a place to incubate these eggs which are then distributed throughout our body via the bloodstream. They create cysts where they land and specifically try to move towards the brain in many cases in order to feed off the nutrients carried to the brain in a combination with the hormones produced there. When they die, the cyst bursts and can cause seizures, blood clots, and other lethal problems such as an aneurysm. That much said, if combined with the fangs of an earthworm and evolved in such a way to be able to consume the flesh directly, they would literally eat us by the brain first. Which is just terrifying. Bioelectric jolts could would not be used to hurl a creature directly in such a way as they would overstimulate it, though. But if you, instead of electrocuting the creature you're shooting, electrocuted the muscles of the creature shooting it, those muscles could be overstimulated to the point of which it would fire, similar to the fact that muscles lock up to the point they become near immovable when you are electrocuted. The same thing happens here, as the muscle is spasming from the electricity in a such a way that it's actually causing damage to the muscle, but it, you're getting the intended effect of not having to evolve a stronger muscle to get the job done. They would devour us similar to how a piranha devours entire legs of human, a swarm of piranhas devours entire human legs in seconds if they were hungry and irritated. I imagine flying through the air at high velocity, slamming into something, and uh, having maybe been electrocuted along the way would definitely irritate them. Because if it doesn't, they'd be a very, very patient maggot, wouldn't they? Tyranids are using the worms in order to save on biomass when a creature that has ammunition is of the size of the worm, but it hungers for your neurological tissues. <laughs> enjoy the en en enjoy sleeping tonight, knowing that if earthworms and tapeworms ever mate, we're fucked. <laughs>